Hey there, Mr. Redder here. Welcome back to another episode of Reddit Podcast Stories. I think my Karen girlfriend has been cheating on me with her coworker, but she keeps denying it, so I'm not sure. I'm 35, male. My girlfriend, who's 32, went out tonight with her sisters and friends for a birthday dinner, and she came home absolutely drunk. I've never seen her this drunk before. Long story short, she went to bed, and her friends kept calling her to make sure that she was okay. Her phone was open to a work email, and that's where I noticed her and her coworker had been sending each other pictures that they had no business sending to each other and talking through email for the past two years. I opened her work email, thousands of messages going back two years, pictures, videos. Her coworker is a 45 year old married man. I confronted her about it, and she's crying hysterically, saying that nothing physical has ever happened between them. But there are messages saying, Meet me in the back hallway, or Meet me in the garage. I don't know what to believe. She's saying she didn't cheat and that she will quit, that it was just strictly virtual or whatever. She also lives with me, so that kind of sucks. It'll probably be a process to kick her out. Not sure if I want to continue the relationship after this. What's the best way to go about this? What do you think those messages about meeting up in certain locations meant? Two people in close proximity to each other for 40 hours a week don't exchange those kinds of pictures for two years without hooking up. Those messages about meeting were absolutely what you think they were. She's lying, saying nothing ever happened. Send the messages to the dude's wife and break up with your girl. This is why monogamy is outdated and never works. You always end up trying to control the person you're with. My hubby and I decided a long time ago that while we love each other, we have no desire to control each other. He knows about my other partners and he even has no problem watching the kids while I go on dates. If you actually love your girlfriend, you need to stop being so jealous and either accept her for who she is or just break up if that's too much for you. Well, what do you think OP should do? Should he break up with his girlfriend or not? Please let us know. I think he needs to find some self-worth. I mean, this should be a no-brainer. Come on, man. Am I the jerk for telling my mom she and my baby brother ruined my summer? Plus updates. I, 16 female, graduated high school in June. Yes, I graduated early. My mom is currently 8 months pregnant and she just had my half baby brother Ben in October of 2021, so he's almost 2 now. My full blood brother, Sam, male 14, was with our dad who lives 8 hours away, all summer and he just got back 2 days ago. My stepfather works, so for most of the day it's just me, my mom and Ben. I'm with Ben in the morning for 2 hours. During this time I feed him breakfast, change his diaper and play with him. I also make my mom coffee and breakfast. My mom sleeps during this time. She wakes up around 9.30 and eats breakfast. Around 10, I walk my dog. When I get back, I put Ben to sleep. My mom plays on her PC during this time. When Ben wakes up, I make his lunch and she feeds him. Then I have to take him outside to walk him. Then I have to take him to water the plants. I have to fetch whatever my mom needs since she can't go up and down the stairs. On top of doing all of this, I had two online classes I was taking. I also had a sick dog I was taking care of. With Sam gone, most of the house chores fall on me. It's a lot to handle. I never complained about any of it. I don't know if it's the pregnancy, but my mom has been extremely mean. It only takes her five minutes after seeing me to start complaining about something I didn't do or I did wrong. She constantly calls me lazy and compares me to kids my age who have driver's license and jobs. These are things that I want, but I literally do not have the time to because of all my jobs at home. This summer, I wanted to go see my brother and dad just for a week because I miss them. My mom said no because I had to take care of my dog. Fair, I guess. I used to go downtown to the library and she said I can't go anymore because I didn't do insert chore here or she needs someone to help with Ben. Right. I wanted to take myself to the movies. No. I want to go to the fair with my brother Sam. No. Yesterday was college orientation. Not only did she text me while I was there complaining about me not telling her we ran out of dishwasher pods, but when I got home, she ranted at me for 20 minutes about how I always ditch my responsibilities. School starts tomorrow and I'm so exhausted and sad. I wanted this to be a fun summer. After yelling at me and then telling me to go buy dishwasher pods last night, my mom made me tell her what was making me so upset. I told her I wasn't ready to share it, but she threatened to take away my computer, which I paid for and also I need for college, so I did. I told her I was tired of doing everything for her, that I felt underappreciated and that she and Ben ruined my summer. She said she was more than capable of taking care of Ben on her own and sent me to bed. It's the next day and she still won't talk to me. She also won't let me help with Ben. I'm feeling a little relieved because it's been a long time since I've had time to myself 
but I also feel sort of bad. Am I the jerk? Who's the mom here? My baby brother calls me mom now, so honestly, maybe I am the mother. Can you go live with your dad? I've never lived with him before since she has full custody, but he said I'm always welcome. Living with my dad probably won't be an option because of how far he lives. I've also mentioned it before, and she shot it down immediately. Update. Per your suggestions, I've decided to look into emancipation. In the meantime, I will get my things in order to be able to back myself up. I'm looking for a job through my college, and I'm going to study to get my permit. If I'm able to get my permit this month, I can have my license by February. I agree that I do need to get out of this house ASAP, but it will most likely be after the new baby is born, unfortunately. I also am deciding where I should live. I'm leaning towards my grandfather because he lives on the other side of my country and he's at least extremely supportive of me and won't expect me to be a slave. A lot of you guys wanted me to move in with my father, but I'm sorry to say he's not the savior you guys want him to be. He and my mother divorced when I was five, but we've never all been a family. I would see him maybe a few times a month and now we speak once a month if that. He is by no means my dad, just a friend I check in with monthly who happened to get my mom pregnant. Here's what's happened since I posted. My mom kicked me out of my bathroom and is now making me share with my brother because apparently I'm not able to keep it clean. Mind you, everyone uses this bathroom and she constantly tells me that it's not just my bathroom, but of course I'm the one responsible for cleaning it. She's found a way to control my devices through some app that uses Wi-Fi to control them. I've gotten three 15-minute rants about how irresponsible I am. I will no longer fight her and just stick to my plan of getting out ASAP. I've switched all my college classes to online as well so I can get up and leave when the time comes. I'm done. Thank you guys for all the support. Hopefully when you hear from me again, I'll be out of this house. I want to be a lawyer. I know I can do it. Who knew I could get so much support from Reddit? Update 2. So I have some good news, I guess. I'm free to go. My mom got upset at me today because I was taking care of my dog and my baby brother at the same time and I forgot to fully clean up after the dog. I've been really stressed lately and I guess it just slipped my mind to go back to clean up because I was with my baby brother and then I took him to his bed to sleep and I went to my computer to start schoolwork. Anyway, I was unloading the dishwasher about an hour later and she saw that my dog's toys were where I left them and got really mad at me. So I cleaned up and found her in my room. She then complained about how there was a cup in my room. Nothing but water is allowed in bedrooms. I had water in the cup. And after that, my baby brother's food pouch was under my bed. I didn't know his pouch was there, but he often goes into my room while I'm not in there, so that must be why it was in there. She kicks me out of my room and tells me that I can only keep what can fit in luggage and everything else of mine she will give away. So now, I don't have a room. I sleep in the living room on an air mattress. I tried to call my grandmother to ask if I could stay with her for a while, but she didn't answer. About 10 minutes later, she asked me what was wrong with me, and I let it all out. Not like last time, though. I told her that she specifically is the reason for all of my stress and that she makes me feel bad about myself. She actually apologized and gave me a hug and said it was because she's pregnant. She asked why I called my grandmother. They're not on good terms right now. And I told her that I wanted to move out and take my dog with me, of course. She was fine with it like a little too fine. She didn't even ask why I wanted to go. She didn't even say she needs to talk it over with my stepfather. She just said I can go. I'm very happy, but a little conflicted. I know I need to go, but I keep thinking about my brothers, how much she'll struggle with two babies by herself. She actually seemed like she felt bad when I told her how the way she was acting made me feel. I will go. I know it's the right choice regardless of my doubts. I'm going to my grandmother's now because she lives in the same city as my dad eight hours away, a big city, and it's easier. Meanwhile, I'll get a job and talk to my grandfather about me moving in with him. I think he'll be open to it. He always wants me to visit and he's extremely supportive. I know it's not the biggest update, but I feel like getting her permission to go was the part I was most afraid of and I have it now, so I wanted to share. Am I the jerk for telling my husband not to call his ex-wife his wife? So my husband, Daniel for privacy, and I have been married for just under a year and I love him very much. He has an 8-year-old daughter, Jane for privacy, from his previous marriage who I love as my own. He's always been respectful and patient which is part of why I decided to marry him. We met right before lockdown when he had been recently widowed the year before so we tried to take things slow. We ended up quarantining together and after 3 years we decided to tie the knot. The wedding ceremony was everything a girl could dream of and we've honestly had very few issues in our first year as a couple. It wasn't until we went to pick up Jane from her summer camp that I started seeing an issue. 
I went to meet up with him at the front desk. I found him chatting with the camp coordinator, which is all well and good, until I overheard what he was saying. He mentioned that, My wife made me this jacket, actually. She was really good at all that sewing stuff. He was referring to his ex-wife, Alyssa, for privacy, not me. It bugged me a little, but I brushed it off as a one-time thing, an accident. We don't talk about Alyssa much unless we're around Jane, and even then, he usually refers to her as Jane's mom. I never heard him call her his wife, especially now that we are married. It wasn't until a week or two later that I learned he does this a lot. We were at a get-together with some friends from work, my first time meeting them. It was all good until one of them asked me questions about baseball. I admitted I don't know much about the sport, and he said that was weird because Daniel had mentioned I was really good at the game and even played some in college. It left me very confused. After talking to some more guys, I found out this was a common issue. A lot of them thought Alyssa and I were the same person because Dan called us both his wife. At this point, I got really offended. We had been married for 10 months and he didn't even call Alyssa his ex-wife yet. It was super awkward explaining to people that he still called his ex-wife his wife. It was humiliating, especially the amount he does it. Not just one or two people, but the whole office. When we got home, we fought. He said he didn't even think about it that way, that since he never divorced Alyssa, he never stopped thinking about her as his wife. He still stands by the fact that Alyssa is his wife, despite how embarrassing it is to explain to people that I'm not his second wife, but rather his new wife and Alyssa his ex. I told him that if he wasn't ready to move on, then he shouldn't have married me, and if he can't commit to being my husband, then he shouldn't get to call me his wife. I spent the next night at my sister's house ignoring his calls. We recently started to smooth things over by not talking about them, but I can tell that this is going to be a sore spot in the marriage, and I'm trying to desperately save it. You're the jerk. She's not his ex, he is her widower. There is a whole world of difference between a marriage that ends in divorce and a marriage that ends in the passing of one of the partners. If you can't cope with the fact that he can love both you and his late wife, then you shouldn't have married him. You are completely at fault here. I'm going back and forth, but I think everyone sucks here. You have to stop saying ex-wife. They didn't divorce. You just have to stop using that term. However, she is his late wife, and you both need to start using that term to refer to her. It's disrespectful of you to call her his ex, and it's disrespectful of him to talk about her in a way that makes people think that you and her are the same person. She's his late wife, and you're his current wife. It's not that complicated. Not going to say you're the jerk, because your husband could simply distinguish the two of you by saying, my first wife and my current wife. But you honestly sound like a jerk for repeatedly referring to his deceased spouse as an ex-wife. That's childish and weird. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or her husband? Please let us know. Am I the jerk for not wanting my boyfriend to come on my work trip? I'm a model. I just got an opportunity to go to Japan for a couple of shoots and a brand I'm working on is flying me out. The trouble is, my boyfriend wants to come. It's his dream to go to Japan and he's insisting that he can pay for his own ticket and stay at the accommodation the client has booked for me. I will be out there for seven days. It's also my dream to work in Japan. I love traveling for my shoots, but the issue is I get grouchy and diva-like when I'm traveling for work and I don't want him to be in super excited to be in Japan sightseeing, I want to do this, I want to get there energy. I live with my boyfriend and we do everything together. We just got back from vacation to Italy this summer. He's getting hurt that even though he can pay for his own travel, I just don't want him there, as if I'm going on holiday. There will be things like call times, lunch, group dinners, client meetings, and I just feel like he will make it all about visiting Pokemon Center and Tokyo arcades and not my work. It makes me feel like he's not taking my modeling career seriously, and this is a fun opportunity for him too. He's even asking for time off from his work. I just don't want him to be mad at home while I'm in our dream destination, but I want him to understand that I want to go to Japan with him in our own time on a real vacation, not work. Am I in the wrong for not wanting him there? Should I bring him? Not the jerk. I did my stints modeling in Asia, Korea, Thailand, Hong Kong, and Japan. Most productions won't book you again unless they specify that you can bring someone along because they are paying you for your time. It's business, not leisure. He needs to understand and respect the fact that you are working and you're not there for play. Maybe next time you can ask if they will allow you to bring a plus one, but definitely do not let him come along without speaking with your booker first. Exactly. In most other lines of work, this wouldn't even be up for debate. Could you imagine a surgeon bringing their spouse to work with them so they could go sightseeing? It's ridiculous. Not the jerk. Do not let him come and ruin your career. 
If he was independent and would ignore you completely while he went off to do tourist things, I still would say he should not join you because even an independent type will expect some level of interaction with you which you won't have time for. The fact you mention in another comment that he is incredibly codependent means to absolutely not allow him to join you. People who just don't have hard, overwhelming jobs that get more intense on business trips just don't get it. Be ruthless about how you communicate this. Do not try to be indirect and gentle because he will not hear the correct message. The fact he's already talking to his work about taking the time off means that you have not been clear enough that this is not an option for him. So you'll need to be clear about that or this will become an everyone sucks here. You're the jerk. You honestly sound rude and inconsiderate. If I were in this position, I'd love for my partner to come along with me. You can claim you won't have time for fun as much as you want, but we all know you're planning to be having nights out while you're there, and I'd bet anything that you're planning on unwinding with some randos you meet. And you insulting him because he likes Pokemon. Seriously? He deserves better, and I hope he finds it. Drive over my bike? Pay the price. Okay, this story took place a very long time ago in the summer of 1969. I was about 12 at the time. I had an early morning paper route in my neighborhood. One of the first things that I bought with my earnings was a brand new 10-speed bike. It was silver with red trim. I was really proud of it and I took very good care of it. I also used it to deliver my newspapers in the morning. One of my customers was often leaving for work around the time that I got there. I always made a point of parking my bike well off to the side while I went up to deliver his paper. This particular morning, he turned too soon and too sharply while backing out of his driveway and backed right over my bike, ruining the front sprocket and derailleur. He stuck his head out the window and asked, Is it okay? Not exactly, I said. Well, that's what you get for leaving it behind my car. He then drove off. I walked at home, crushed and upset. I felt helpless against this adult who clearly had no intention of doing anything about it and I didn't know what to do. My hurt, frustration, and powerlessness gradually turned to anger. I stopped delivering his paper, and when he complained, I told my supervisor that I was delivering, but he just liked to complain, so ultimately it wasn't held against me. But the real revenge was yet to come. He lived on the main route through the neighborhood that all the kids took to go to the local 7-Eleven and other places. His mailbox sat on a steel fence post loosely set in the ground. That summer, I got in the habit of pulling it up and throwing it over the fence into the cemetery across the street maybe once or twice a week. It was fun and mischievous, but it still didn't satisfy my need for revenge. He had three large frond shrubs in his backyard that would grow to six or eight feet tall over the course of the summer and then begin to die back down. They were several feet apart with nothing else close by. One August morning, I threw a lit match into one on the way home, <laughs> on the way home from 7-Eleven. I never heard anything else, but on my route the next morning, it was just a burnt husk in his front yard. Over the next couple of weeks, I did the same to the, to the other two. I was beginning to feel a bit satisfied. Young arsonist on our hands. But one morning, on the way home from delivering papers, I had an inspiration. I saw that the side window of his garage was open. I knew that what I was considering was taking it a bit far. No, you? But I was an impulsive kid, and I thought tit for tat was fair. Back in the day, everybody carried road flares, aka emergency flares, in their cars. So I climbed through the window, found two flares, lit them, and stuck one right under each of his rear tires, then climbed out and hightailed it home and went back to bed. I did not go back to see what happened, and I stayed away from the area for several days. I knew that I had ruined his tires. I never saw the results, but I didn't care, and I never did another thing to him. Note to self, never make the paper boy mad. You will regret it. Girlfriend ended a seven-year relationship, and I don't know why. I'm a 21-year-old male, while she's 22. We began dating seven years ago when we were quite young and everything seemed perfect back then. Looking back, the first four to five years were really positive from my perspective. We engaged in many activities, got along well with each other's families, and things were great. Around two years ago, she started university and we're both still in the same city, about a 20-minute drive apart. After her initial year at university, she went through an extremely challenging phase. She ended up in the hospital for a week because she couldn't eat or drink on her own. The doctors attributed it to stress and put her on antidepressants. Since she began taking them, our relationship took a turn. Within a span of six months, mind you, as everything mentioned occurred in that time frame, and things were excellent before this. She completely stopped showing any interest in me or anything related to me. 
She didn't inquire about my life, studies, work, friends, or family during these six months, even though I was there to listen and support her with her concerns. She started going out frequently, minimum two times a week, to bars with her friends. She once referred to them as getting around too much just a year ago. She quit her job, despite having been diligent about saving money throughout our relationship. At the start of the summer, I unintentionally saw her bank account and she had only $6.40 left. Despite this, she continues to go out every Saturday, returning home drunk. I don't believe all her drinks are covered by her friends. That about sums it up. I would like to acknowledge any mistakes I might have made and provide a reason for the breakup, but I'm at a loss to pinpoint exactly what I did wrong. I've made an effort to ask her how I can improve things recently because I truly wanted our relationship to succeed. However, her mother texted me this morning informing me that my ex-partner wants nothing to do with me and she blocked me on all platforms. I've never felt this bad before. You become different people in your 20s and people can change on medicines as well. I'm 29, almost 30 and can absolutely confirm. Who I was when I was 22 is almost completely different from who I am now. It's been a wild ride so far, but I'm changing all the time. It almost breaks my heart to see so many people in their early 20s posting here, but to be frank, a lot of you youngins need to experience their 20s to the fullest, and that includes the crappy stuff. I hope OP picks himself up soon as he is able to and strives for trying new things and being the best person he can be. We ain't here long. Honestly, you're 21 and 22. You're not the same people you were 7 years ago at all. People grow apart. It's normal. The same thing happened to me twice. They were both long-term relationships where they just changed eventually, largely in part due to the influence their friends had on them. Something I've learned is that we as men, we can love you and want you for life, put you first, and not be influenced by our friends to go out and live toxic lifestyles doing stupid things. If only they were capable of loving us in the same way. That's why we are rarely the ones that initiate divorce. All we want is love and companionship. All they want is to have fun and live in the moment. Don't worry, my guy. Once she's in her 30s and has a few kids, all from different dads, that's the point they start regretting their life decisions and you'll get a message from her apologizing for leaving you and saying how wrong she was to do so. Don't fall for it, though. She just wants to use you at that point. I blocked both of them when they tried that on me. Wow, you're a total idiot. Just because you got dumped by two girls, that means none of us are capable of showing unconditional love? Get over yourself. No wonder you got dumped twice. Am I the jerk for not paying for my stepdaughter's schooling and college tuition while paying for my kid's college tuition? For some context, me and my ex-wife have been married for 10 years and divorced for 5. When we first got married, I had an adopted kid, biologically my sister's son. I raised him because my sister suffers from partial paralysis from the waist down and in her right arm so she can't move around without assistance. So when me and my wife got married, we were both 23 and each had one-year-old kids. We decided not to adopt each other's kids because my ex-wife would lose child support and I didn't want to risk losing custody of my son in case of a divorce. We divorced five years ago and all the assets were split equally but just mainly a small two-bedroom apartment. After the divorce, I started my own company and got really lucky when lockdown hit as every major company allowing work from home allowed me to upscale my business rapidly. I now make very good money in the range of mid seven figures a year. So I decided to set up a fund of around $400,000 that my son would be able to use for college and the remaining for whatever he wanted to do afterwards and a trust for my son so that he and his mom would be taken care of if I passed. Recently, my ex-wife has heard about this and claims that I should be setting up a college fund for her daughter because I should apparently treat them both exactly the same even though I don't have legal custody of her and have gone almost zero contact with them both for the last five years, although I was pretty close to her daughter when we were married. Update. From the feedback I got from this post, I realized that I didn't want to be the kind of person that just does things because they have to. And since my stepdaughter was a massive part of my life, I'm planning on setting up an educational trust she can use at 18 to just pay for college for about half of my sons when I get in touch with a lawyer. Not the jerk. Not your kid. Not your problem. The father should be paying for the kid's school. Not you. She just wants the easy money, to be honest. It would be like winning the lottery using just a smidge of emotional manipulation. She already has two parents to save for college. Some people are so unreasonable. Your ex doesn't see the lack of logic in her request, not the jerk. It sounds like your ex has not made any attempt to make sure her daughter continued a relationship with you. 
If you choose to help her out, great, but you don't have a relationship or responsibility for her daughter. I can't believe Reddit. If I've got my math right, you were this girl's stepdad from age 1 to 11. No, you don't have to pay for her college, but it's amazing how Reddit morality assumes that all that matters is what you are or are not absolutely obligated to do. Do what you want, but did you read this girl bedtime stories? Did she call you dad? It sounds like the relationship has atrophied since you divorced your ex-wife. But was that your stepdaughter's choice? She was 11 when you moved away, right? You've come into an incredible amount of money through a mix of work and luck. You have the chance to do something hugely important for a girl you helped raise for most of her childhood. You could do that or keep more of the money. I see why you're not the jerk by Reddit standards, but based on what you've described here, you're the jerk in my book. Karen loses it on me for shopping at a thrift store. I went thrift shopping this morning. My husband, who's 30, and I, 38, are expecting our first baby in a couple of months, so I've been getting stuff ready for the baby. I hate paying retail prices when I don't really know what he will need. I also hate being wasteful and the ecological impact. So I've been buying some of his onesies and the like from a not-for-profit thrift shop in my area. I've been thrifting since college, whether Poshmark or brick-and-mortar thrift shops, and I've never thought anything of it if the stuff was nice and well-priced. While shopping, I started chatting with another lady who was pregnant and shopping for her baby as well. We were laughing and having a good time enjoying our deals and excitement over our babies. We were going back and forth about the good deals we had found, like I got a very lightly used pottery barn crib online. She got a glider still in the box from a different thrift shop. We both finished and went to check out. As we were walking out, I was getting ready to invite her to coffee when she saw my car and she said in a really weird tone, You drive a Tesla? I wasn't really sure how to reply except, Yeah, I really like it, and moved on. Her demeanor changed instantly, like I had done something truly horrendous. She read me the riot act about taking advantage of thrift stores and charity when I clearly don't need it, that I was robbing the poor and asking me how dare I could do that. I had never seen it that way. I just thought of it as not being wasteful and supporting a good cause. I apologized for offending her and told her I did not see it the same way, but the conversation ended with her telling me to go forget myself and storming off. So am I the jerk here? Is there a certain income level or point where it is unethical to buy second hand? Ultimately, not the jerk, but I do see where this other woman is coming from. A lot of thrift shops have started raising prices because thrifting has become so popular, which kind of defeats the purpose. It also means that the shop no longer has those items for someone else who needs them, but genuinely may not be able to afford anything but thrift shop prices. Maybe try to keep more to Poshmark, eBay, etc. than the brick and mortar shops. 1000% agree with this as someone who survived on charity shops growing up. While it's good not to waste, just be mindful that poor people simply won't be able to get the things they need if they can't get them from charity stores, whereas you, OP, have the means to buy new if you can't find what you want. If my family couldn't get a couch or a mattress or dining table from the charity shop, we just didn't have one. Slept on air mattresses and sat on the floor. It could be good to leave those rare fine items and simply buy from ethical stores, eBay, whatever. If you have the Tesla, I'm guessing you make enough to be able to go to stores that are more expensive but are committed to sustainability. Also, anyone who thrifts just to sell on Depop or eBay is words this sub prohibits. I'm a former board member of a charity thrift store and we desperately want you to shop with us. We use that money to support the charitable work we do. All customers are welcome. Not the jerk. She's clearly got some insecurities about finances though and may have just been projecting them on you. While she was a tool, don't judge her too harshly yet as you never know what's going on behind the scene. Anyway, you're all good. You're the jerk. Why y'all always trying to take from us? You know you got enough money to buy new clothes if you drive a Tesla. I don't blame her for going off on your behind. I would have done the same darn thing. You out here driving foreign cars while I'm having to have more babies just to get my check from the government to stay up with inflation. You just don't know what struggle is with yo rich, entitled, spoiled little self. I swear I'm tired of y'all coming at me with this BS and you really want to act like you ain't know this was wrong. What you gonna do next? Go to the food pantry because it's the hip thing to do? Taking from folks who ain't got nothing. You ought to be ashamed of yourself for real jerk. P.S. 
That boy Elon Musk do look like an alien though. Well, what do you think? Is OP a jerk for shopping at the thrift store or not? Please let us know. I used to go to Goodwill myself back in the day, but these days they're so expensive I find cheaper stuff at Walmart now. I knew my job, but the new manager thought he knew it better. So I used to work for one of the top delivery companies in the UK. There was a lot less competition 15 years ago. I was very good at my specific delivery job and I often undertook every office task from single delivery routes to maintaining the office and delivery distribution to all routes. Then one day, in comes the new manager, and it was the cliché that you dread. You probably all have met the type. Suit slightly too big and a trainee mustache. He had just finished uni, and to his credit, he got himself a business degree. The problem with this company was every office around the whole country was run differently, and this poor manager was expecting every person to do things by the letter, but most of the work was done on goodwill, since we were allowed to finish for the day when we had completed our deliveries. It was creating a rod for our own backs, to be honest, but it was nice to finish earlier on lighter days. Finally, on his third day, after watching me daily and asking me why I was doing things in certain orders, I told him my delivery route was complex and required it to be done in a certain order to ensure the time deliveries got there before 1 p.m. and the other delivery staff were fed their delivery materials by myself at certain times to ensure optimum delivery speeds and minimum delay. He replied, No, it doesn't work like that. I simply stared for a bemused few seconds and said I don't understand. He wanted it by the letter today, as per company guidelines. I argued very hard against it and said he will really regret it because we won't complete, but he insisted I was wrong because it was all timed and measured. So after an exasperated 15-minute heated discussion, I did as I was told, to the letter. The five staff I fed deliveries to weren't happy but understood. It was like a domino effect of carnage. At 12.30 p.m., we all rang in the office to report the failed time deliveries, which he promptly freaked out about because they were strictly monitored. The subsequent enforced break times and shuffling required also left 15 to 20% of each walk unfinished, which he also now has to complete himself on top of the timed ones. He had to fill out reports for all failed 1 p.m. deliveries, all walk failures, and then had to call in managers from the other offices to finish it all. They all finished around four hours late. He was not popular. The next day he came to me and asked me to show him the mechanics of the delivery route in detail because I didn't expect that to happen if I'm honest. It was close enough to an apology for me. We actually became good friends over time, but he never questioned me when I said nope ever again. Am I the jerk for refusing to give someone her grandma's jewelry back? I, 26 female, bought a hoarder house back in May of 2018. It's a big six bedroom, four and a half bathroom house. When I bought it, the contract stated that I take ownership of the house and everything in it. The lady who owned it had passed and her heirs could not deal with the stench and literal mountains of junk and waste in it. You could only open the door not even eight inches and some rooms had junk filling them wall to wall and floor to ceiling. Well, it took me these last four years to finish cleaning, fixing and updating it. While doing the cleaning, I made sure to check everything before throwing it out. Ended with more than $20,000 worth of money, some nice jewelry and antique furniture, and finally, a stunning 40s-style lace-covered wedding dress. This woman took care of that dress until she couldn't anymore, and it took just some minor work to restore it. I currently don't have a partner, but I decided that it would be the dress I will be wearing if I ever get married. While doing the cleaning, I reached to the heirs to pass on some pictures and mementos, Christmas ornaments, artwork, and because of that, I had one of them, who's in her 30s, on my Facebook friends list. After repairing the dress, I put it on with the jewelry and posted a pic on Facebook. Well, this woman saw it and asked for the dress and heirlooms back. I refused to give them back, and legally, they can't do anything. Also, if they meant that much to them, they should have cleaned the house on their own, not sell it to me. Now she and all her family are calling me out on social media. Am I the jerk? Not the jerk. Recovering hoarder here. Legally, you are in the right. Morally, you are also in the right. And though I cannot speak for the woman whose things you now own, I can give you insight into how I would feel if I passed before I could find homes for my treasures. I would want someone who cared enough to restore and respect the items to have them. You saw the beauty in them, as did she. 
you didn't just chuck it all in a dumpster. Take them, wear them, be happy to honor the original owner. Her family did not view these things as anything but a hassle. Not the jerk. It's a lot to clean a hoarder's house. They could have hired a service if they were mentally unable to do it, but instead they dumped it on someone else who paid them to take the house and all that's in it. If they cared about the items, they should have offered you money or asked you to keep an eye out. It's yours. You did the work. I don't care how cheap you got the house. It probably doesn't even out, like someone said, because hoarding houses are disasters. Simply put, and it takes a lot of time to clean and restore them. Not the jerk. You bought it, and then, more importantly, you did a ton of work to save and restore these things. Honestly, if I were the grandma, I'd rather have my stuff go to a random stranger who gave a hoot than anyone else. Also, on that note, I'm going to call out everyone in the comments, fortunately not that many, who say that this dress is more important to the family member. Um, no. It's not that important to the family. Their convenience was more important. Now that all of the hard work is done, suddenly it all means so much more to them. That's ridiculous. My grandmother was a hoarder, and my family spent months cleaning out her house after she passed. We did that because our family heirlooms and history meant something to us. It wasn't easy. It was costly and time-consuming and miserable and really important. You don't get to come back later, after all the work is done, and decide you're suddenly entitled to the fruit of someone else's work. I'm going to have to go with you're the jerk. While you may legally own those items, and they could have looked through the house themselves, once you've opened up communication with the family and friended them on Facebook, flaunting their grandma's stuff, and expensive stuff at that, is like rubbing their loss of heirlooms in their faces. There are many reasons people sell homes as is. People on this subreddit seem to think it's just because they didn't care enough to look through it themselves. But more than likely, other factors, like mental health, grief, managing debt after a loss, were all huge factors. Maybe they made a difficult decision and sold the house to pay for a funeral. Who knows? It doesn't mean that what's in the house isn't still significant. OP clearly said that the dress looked like it had been taken care of, probably more than other things in the home which means that this lady probably wanted to pass on her wedding dress. Flaunting that and her valuable possessions in front of the family through Facebook is thoughtless behavior. To echo what others have said, what is legal and moral are two different things. Well, what do you think? Should OP give back the dress or the heirlooms or not? Please let us know. I don't know. I mean, I'd give them back. I wouldn't feel like I have to, but I would just do it to, you know, be nice, I guess. Do this next. Tap here on your screen to come see our new podcast playlist, where you'll find thousands of hours of the best stories you've ever heard. Or tap the one on the right. That episode is specifically just for you, based on other videos you've enjoyed the most.